<laughs> you had to do this to me right before a show. Oh, hello everyone, and welcome, welcome to the show. I wish I could tell you what we're laughing about, but I can't. I absolutely can't. Um, welcome, folks. Welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio. In Orlando, Florida, I'm literally crying. Uh, I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Rhino Clavin. Hello. Erica Resnick. Hi, friends. Craig Williams. Oh, hoy, hoy. Corey Martin. I'm just happy to be here. And our producer this week, Mr. John Sicari. This may be my last day if this doesn't go well. Wish me luck. <laughs> this is his first time producing a live show. Um, so he's very concerned that He's going to get fired if he doesn't do it well, which, of course, he's not. There's a lot of people and a lot of buttons. Well, this is part of the learning process, right? You've got to learn this stuff. Well, welcome, folks. Hope your week is off to a good start. Just a reminder, if you are a Patreon supporter, please stay tuned after this show for our exclusive Patreon after show just for our wonderful Patreon supporters. If you're interested in joining us, on Patreon, we do a lot of extra content that does not show up on our YouTube channels publicly. Um, and we have a lot of fun. We just did something really cool for the first time the other night, the other day. We um, did a live broadcast of our DCL shows, but we did the entire, like, because we record, pre record four shows at a time, but we live stream the entire session. And mm -hmm. folks really seem to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So patreon.com slash disunplugged is where you can sign up for that. And just a reminder, this show, along with all the content we produce, brought to you by dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, um, of which I am one of the owners. So if you like our content, that's how I pay these people, um, please book your next Disney vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. All right. Why do I have this on my my script? I don't know. I don't know. It's one. It's going to be one of those days. It's going to be one of those shows. It'll be one of those shows, and it's Rhino's fault. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stop right now! Stop it right now! Um, all right, all right. Um, what do we want to talk about first? I feel like we're laughing so much. I don't want to. I don't want to segue right into death. Death. Yeah. And I, I feel like we have to start with Magic Band Plus since that was the biggest thing to happen last week and a nice bookend from last week's show where we were asking ourselves lots of questions about how it would be and we now have official opinions as users of Magic Band Plus. And okay. I've got thoughts, but I, maybe Erica will spread some positivity first before I come and crap all over Magic Band Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that works. That works. Um, so I bought it the day it came out, and I was happy to get the Magic Band Plus that Jody Benson wore in the little promotional video. It's the princess one, and I knew that's the one I had to have. So I got that, and the first thing that happened was that my phone battery started dying really quick. That I didn't like. It was really cute, so I liked that. Well, let's let's let people know exactly what is Magic Band Plus. So it's a new Magic Band interactive, interactive with the Fab Fifty statues that are around the park. There's the Bounty Hunter game over in Galaxy's Edge, and if you have the Disney Play app, you get a little bit more out of it because it documents. There's like a quest. I don't have the Play app, but there's a lot of interactive things with it. It lights up, it vibrates to let you know that you're closer to the Fab 50 statues, things like that. Um, the bands that have designs are about $45, and the basic bands with no designs are around 35 So they are pricier than the normal bands, but you can still purchase the normal bands. Disney's not saying that you have to have Magic Band Plus to get in the parks or anything like that. Um, I've loved interacting with the statues. Right, I like what happens? Like a crazy person. Well, is there, so there's a, they light up and there's the haptic, the mm -hmm. so it like vibrates too at certain times. I, I don't. I, that's does the statue do anything? So you gotta wave at it like a crazy person for a while, and then eventually either music will play 
or the character will say like a little catchphrase and I've been able to get most of them to work. Sometimes you gotta like step back and pause for a second before you try again. Um, I don't, there's something weird with the sensors on there, but what I've been noticing is that next to these statues, they have the loudest speakers for the ambiance music. So when you're waving at the character and they're saying something or playing a song, it's actually kind of hard to hear in some areas because they're blasting those speakers so loud that I wish they would lower those speakers a little bit if there was a way to, when the statue gets activated, lower that speaker's volume so that we can hear the whole interaction. But so far I've been having a lot of fun with it. I like that, you know, as you get closer to a statue, it'll vibrate, let you know that you're near one so you can step aside and do that. But then also, um, I like that it lights up. I think it's cute. Um, I use a dash pass, so I scanned into Frozen the other day and it was like doing a whole little show for me on my wrist and I thought that was cute. Do I think everyone needs it? No, unless you like to collect magic bands or if you're someone that wants to have that extra interaction while you're at the park. Are parks. you doing this in conjunction with your phone app the whole time? Yeah, it's Bluetooth. So, my it, phone's dying just by talking about this. So <laughs> I... So well, that's been a problem for a lot of okay. people Here's, because you have to Bluetooth, you have yes. to pair it with Bluetooth so to your phone. So I, you don't have to because I don't like having my Bluetooth on, but it says that it will enhance the experience if you have your Bluetooth on. And that's when I saw my phone starting to die really quickly. And that's why I turned off my Bluetooth. And I was like, I'm just gonna use this at like the most bottom tier level possible. Because unfortunately at Disney, you don't have time for your phone to be dying. Because now your magic band can die. This happened to my wife. She was like, I wanna go to Epcot and I wanna use the new band and everything. And you know, it was fully charged when I bought it. We didn't think to charge it before leaving because we hadn't used it. We thought it would still be fully charged. She waved at two characters and it was dead. So if you need to charge mm. your phone and the band at the same time, because you know, Genie Plus, Lightning Lanes, you have to use the app for almost everything it will drain out that battery, which is why I didn't use the Bluetooth. I was like, I, I can't sacrifice my phone battery right now. I really can't. Yeah, I, I, the guy when I bought it told me that they had to be above 60% charge to function with um, some of the special stuff that it does. So I'm assuming like, I think the statues is one thing mm -hmm. that has to be over 60% charge for that or something. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like I got one and I'm working on a, a Patreon specific video for that because it's, it is a, a slow learning curve for me to even figure out how to do it. Actually, while I was sitting down figuring out, a, a Patreon member came up and sat and chatted with me and stuff like that. So that might have been part of my learning curve because I was having a conversation. But I was, I basically figured out how to get it synced to my phone. So it synced to my phone and the color pattern, because I got the Black Panther one, is set to that. But I have no idea how to get it to do anything beyond that or what. what I also it understood. Does. I also understood that as soon as you pair it to your phone, it needs to do an update. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do the update, and it still worked fine. But if you're worried about your band dying and it being able to let you into the park or to scan lightning lanes, that still works. You can use a lightning lane. You can still use it to scan in and all of that. Um, you just can't do all of the other fun things if the band is dead or dying. Okay, I was and wondering about yeah. that, that's going to mess with everything else. Yeah, we got worried after my wife's band died. We were like, well, how are we going to get onto the Frozen ride? We have to scan to get on. And it still worked to scan and everything. And so that's good. But, yeah, there's a lot of learning that has to go into it. You have to update it. Um, and to update it, it has to either be charging or over 60% um, charge to update the Magic Band. They look, um, they look cool. I watched Craig's video, but it sounds exhausting. The, the So when I went in to do it, because I had heard about the battery thing um, and stuff, I brought the fuel rods with me, and I just plugged in the um, charger for the Magic Band into my fuel rod, and that seemed to charge it all the way up. But I don't know if it got to 100%. Or if it was it was already a hundred percent or anything because I wasn't sure how to sync it at that point yet or not. So, yeah. Are you having issues with Corey? Yeah. Yeah, I was. Corey, low. yeah, we're gonna do a live update on Corey. Right, here we go. Let me just talk and. You want me to just lip sync to you? You, can you okay? Do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can describe it's what I'm button. saying. <laughs> just Corey, please. All right, here we go. Can y'all hear me in chat? Keep going. Am Corey. I too low? Or am I too high? Now you're good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Corey, I like how you match your, for our, for our uh, 
listening folks, this means nothing. But uh, Corey is wearing the same, is wearing a lovely uh, shirt with a shade of Diz <laughs> microphone blue. Yeah, uh, I planned it. Matchy matchy. Isn't this more greenish? I'm colorblind, so I couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's coming up blue on the monitor, but it's blue-ish. It's more greenish blue. It, it was the only like thing the I had that wasn't wrinkled. How about that? There you go. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, I'm I'm hearing mixed things about these magic band, and and as as you're sitting here and, and describing it, well, it sounds cool. All I keep thinking to myself is how much more complicated <laughs> are they going to make the process of going into a theme park? Okay. So since I've been quiet during all of this, now let me tell you the truth. It is completely... Because Erica was lying to us. No, it's... <laughs> listen, I also look at, like, butterflies flying sometimes, and I'm like, wow, that's really pretty. That's it's really nice. Endangered that's, now. that's cute. Yeah, they are. And then are. he swats it's it sad. down and steps <laughs> on uh, Same thing with bees. Uh, you know, it's... Wow, it's nature. It's beautiful. Uh, these are, right now, as it currently stands, Magic Band Plus is a complete gimmick. It is not like it is literally useful for three things. Technically, if you really want to break it down, you can stand and watch fireworks with your wrist up in the air or you can do like I did and just take it off and hold it up in front of you and you look like a psychopath. Uh, (laughs) But you have that as an option. And, you know, it's literally it's glow with the show 2.0. That's all it is. That's exactly what I was thinking when I saw your video. It's completely it's completely irrelevant. Yeah, it was cool when you took the effort to do that, but it's just not practical. No one's doing it. The statues. I was waving like crazy in front of the statues at Hollywood Studios, and I got two out of seven of them to work. And when they did work, one of them, I could barely hear the sound, but I opened up the app, and I was able to double-check on there and be like, okay, I did I did actually get them, so that worked. The other one, I was standing probably about six to eight feet away, recording a video where I just shook my wrist for one second. I heard Edna Mode go off in the distance. And I'm like, I think I just set off a statue that I'm like decently far away from. And sure enough, opened up the app and I did set off Edna Mode. So and it tells then, you in the app who what yes, statues you're in front of? It absolutely does okay. in the Play Disney Parks. Uh, the coolest thing that Magic Band Plus is for is for the Bounty Hunters game. But it is the technology is just so problematic. Um, you know, I know we keep going on with Bluetooth and such. Uh, regardless of how you feel about all of it uh it does not know how to track you very well so like the whole point of the bounty hunters game is a game of red light green light hot and cold whatever you want to call it they give you assign you a bounty you need to go find and your band is supposed to either glow green if you're getting closer and light up and vibrate more intense if you're you're getting closer and it does red if you're in the wrong location and it kind of works. It doesn't work very well. Uh, it does not pick up on your location quick enough. So, like, for instance, I was walking all over Galaxy's Edge and could not figure it out because it was just staying the steady color green. And then I got to one area where I finally thought my bounty was. And at that point, it goes red. And it will not stop on the red. So I just retrace my steps backwards. And I'm like, well, if it was telling me green all the way up until this point clearly eventually it will tell me i'm going the right direction no i had to walk basically back to where the start of the game was and then retrace my steps and on a 95 degree day in disney's hollywood studios the last thing you want to do is be walking around in circles this is what i meant by exhausting yes and ultimately like in that situation the door i thought i was supposed to be at where it was telling me red the actual door I was supposed to be at was only 20 feet away. So it could not pick up. It just, it did not know exactly where I was in the park or it didn't relay it to the band or my phone. It just, it was not perfect. But ultimately the game is you basically walk up to doors that have a panel and you scan the door once you know you're at the right panel. So there's only so many doors in Galaxy's Edge. So you start to figure it out. Everyone's standing in the same positions. I know as it becomes a novelty and wears on you know less people will play so it'll be a little bit more inventive but right now it just doesn't really work the technology could be very cool in the future if they come up with more games if they come up with just 
and they will. neater they things, will. and they will. They'll iron all this stuff. But out right now, them. it's it's just kind of a waste of money. And I mean, you can at least save money if you have a resort reservation or like annual pass holders. You can order your Magic Band Plus and save ten dollars. So it'll be twenty five or uh, or thirty five, and personalizations available and all that. But I mean, even even at that. Not good. Okay. I'm done. Absolutely nothing about this sounds appealing to me. Nothing. I, I, I realize I'm crotchety and old, but it just sounds like it's one more complicated thing to have to deal with. Or if when you're going to a theme park. Or if you've run out of things to do with a theme park. Like, I've done everything, I'm bored, let me mm-hmm. go do this. Yeah, it's, it, it's great for that. It's great if you're looking for something that you've never done before, but, like, if you are aggressive, you could technically go to all four parks, unlock every statue, if they're working correctly, in a day. You can play five to ten rounds of Bounty Hunters, and you can watch a nighttime show with your wrist up in front of you. <laughs> and you can knock it all out in one day. So right now, there's just not enough with it. And there is potential for the future, but it's it's today. I don't I don't think they should have rolled it out until they had more than the three uses for it. Because after you are bored playing with all the games, then you just have another Magic Band that you paid more money for than the last version. I was also surprised. I thought it was going to be a better quality band because it was so much more money. And when I opened it, I was kind of shocked. Like I took it out. It's been a long time since I got a Magic Band. And the the band itself is so thin that I was like, if I had bent this back a little bit, I probably would have snapped the. That I would have broken the the band piece off. So I I don't know. I just kind of was like, oh, that's a bummer. I thought it was going to be like silicon, like the Apple Watch bands or something like that, like a little thicker material, and it's yeah. like paper thin. No, I agree. It felt very pla- plasticky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine mine fell off my wrist because you know it's like a million degrees outside, and I I was sweating. And then the band just opened up while I was walking, and someone was nice enough to say, oh, the band fell, and I went and picked it up. But I think. I, it's not for everyone, right? It's not for everyone. I've heard a lot of people that are like, my kids love it. I give it to them. They're just waving at the statues like mm-hmm. crazy, and it helps keep them occupied. Um, for me, like, for me, it's fun because I think it's cute. I think, you know, I think Disney will be building more onto it eventually, or I think that they <coughs> should be build more onto it um, to make it even more interactive. But I think it just depends on what your type of park experience is. For me, I don't mind taking a minute to wave at a statue and wait for it to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to do all of them, and then I go hide in AC to cool off because, you know, it's a lot. Um, but I think it depends on how you want your park experience to be. Right. So, like, if you're not someone that wants to take the extra time to stand there and see if it's going to work or, you know, you want your phone battery to stay alive, like, it's just different people will use it in different ways and i i liked it because i thought it was cute i liked the pattern i got am i going to buy more like i collect the other magic bands probably not because that's the only one i really wanted but i think it's fun for the kids right i think disney should fix the the volume issue but i think it depends on the park experience you want to have i can see it being fun for kids yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure it'll be fun for some kids, but also like I can stand behind a statue all day and you know do bad character impressions, and you can get the same exact <laughs> <laughs> enjoyment out of it. So it's all you need is a parent standing to the side and going like, "Oh, they're waving at Donald," <laughs> like whatever. A kid's not going to know the difference one way or another. Uh, but one thing I saw in here was again the the common saying about us is we're, we're all speaking from the locals perspective uh i'm not sure what that really means in terms of magic band pluses uh i like i don't see a difference between using it as a local versus right on vacation if anything, because you'd be using it more i use it yeah, yeah i think you would use it more on vacation and you would run out of uses for it a lot faster than a local because like on my day i had to go home for hours in the middle of the day and I still got so much done with the band in that one day. So I, it's this is one of those things. It's not a locals versus out of towners. This is this is everyone. The band just has limited use right now. It's pretty. The lights are all cute and it's nice. Uh, especially what I saw from people watching Beacons of Magic with it. It's like, oh, that that is pretty. It really does sync up. But that's it. It's a it's a flashlight on your hand that you can't like control like a flashlight. 
Just blinky lights. It's like Buzz Lightyear's laser. <laughs> On a laser. Okay. Uh, again, as a local, <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with the price of eggs in China, but uh, I, I, I just don't, I, I don't see any value in it. I really don't. I just don't see any value in it. But. All right. Let's talk about something else. Sad news. Uh, over the weekend, Pat Carroll, the voice of Ursula from The Little Mermaid, passed away of pneumonia at the age of 95. I had no idea the career she had. Um, and through the 50s and 60s and the 70s, she's, she was on... A, you know, she was a comedian. She was on Sid Caesar's Caesar's Hour, the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Uh, Please don't eat the daisies. Love American style. My three sons. Police woman busting loose. The love boat. Trapper John, M.D. Evening shade. Designing women in E.R. Hmm. So that spans that spans the '70s, the '80s, and into the '90s. That uh, she was working. She had a pretty prolific career. From down the Cape of Massachusetts. I knew that. What's that? If she's from, uh, I believe she's from like Hyannis or something in Massachusetts, down the Cape. So, oh. my friend and I always used to be like, we're gonna go find Pat someday. <laughs> I I actually had the pleasure of meeting her in a weird situation. They were signing when her Walt Disney Classic Collection Ursula came out. The uh, you know the the statue, mm-hmm. and nobody was in the store to get her. It was just me, her, and the owner of the store. So it was kind of odd that I was you know fanboying over her. And she was so warm and made such a big deal about me. I mean, you know, it was, it was cute. She was, I was 17, she was pushing my cheeks. And she says, oh, darling, oceans of love is how she signs everything. And she said it a few times, and she was just endearing. I, I love her. She's one of my favorites. Yeah, sad news. Sad news. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, D23. You have some thoughts uh, they, they released the schedule for this year's D23 Parks panel. Um, yeah, I actually, I think it was, I thought it was the Parks panel when I was looking at it, but it looks like it's kind of more multiple panels and some... Uh... Well, my, my number one question, does any, anybody think Bobby Paycheck <laughs> is showing up? For D23. I think he will be there for at least the Legends ceremony because I think that that is actually the CEO's responsibility to bestow the Disney Legends Award on to the recipients. I don't know that he'll be there for more than that, though. I can't imagine that he's going to be there for, like, the Marvel or the studio or stuff like that. I don't know. Um, that's all All Iger was ever usually there for was Legends, and that was his big thing. Yeah, and Alan Horn was there a lot. Yeah, the, whoever's the head show. of the studios will do the... Well, they, they're changing up all the panels this year a little bit, and like Marvel and Lucasfilm are together, so I'm assuming someone from Lucasfilm and someone from Marvel will I head up both like of those. Kathleen and Kevin. Maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Kathleen's going to be going out there. She might send John Favreau or someone out there for it, but then like Disney Plus, like television stuff, it's all, it's all going to be segmented, but I do think Bob Chapek will be there, but only for Legends, and... I, I've shared my thoughts on this before too. I don't. I don't think. I don't think the crowd's going to lose it on him during Legends because, you know, it's it's bad show, and then also it's kind of it's kind of weird to do that in a yeah. ceremony mm-hmm. that is all about, you know, lifting up these people who have been so important to Disney, oh, Lucasfilm, so, Marvel. He is so hated, though. He is so hated. I. <sighs> People have to. They're still fans. I know they're still fans, but they gotta they gotta pump the brakes because that's if you are gonna walk into a room like that and boo the CEO, that's when you're taking this all way too seriously. Yeah. Like, start really making some personal decisions about is is this now a cult versus a fandom, and really really think about that in that way. And are you, you going, know? Craig? Yep. You are. Yep. No. So. Uh, 
looking looking forward to it. the the most The panel I'm looking forward to the most, more than Muppets. anything, is yeah. On uh, Saturday, there's going to be a 30 Years of the Muppets Christmas Carol panel. I saw that. And, and I was like, Craig's gonna be yeah. sleeping right outside of this door. <laughs> I will. I will probably just cry through the entire thing because you know it's. While I don't find uh, you know myself joining the cult of a lot of Disney, I will say that for Muppets Christmas Carol, I am the first and potentially only cult member. So you'll uh, die on that felt hill. You'll be yeah, holding that magic band up. No, I will. <laughs> if they tell me there will be something with Magic Band Plus there during that panel, it'll be right in front of me the entire time. I will uh, be. I will be very much looking forward to it. Uh, another one I'm really uh, interested in. Don't think I'll be able to attend it because of the timing. Is there there's, there's one called Uncovering Treasures from the Marty Sklar Collection, and uh, it's a bunch of memorabilia from Marty Sklar that, while we were on our last ABD, we kind of got a peek at what they have in his collection. And this man was a complete hoarder when it came to anything that crossed his desk at Disney. He kept every single piece of paper, like anything that could have potentially been important. So I think they're going to probably showcase a lot of very, very unique, cool vintage uh, Disney memorabilia that you didn't even realize was like out there and exists. That's going to be cool. Yeah, that one that one could be very, very cool. And of course, just the uh, Disney Parks experience and products panel in general that Josh Tomorrow will be hosting where we'll get to see everything that is coming up in the future for uh, Walt Disney World and Disneyland and well, all Disney products. What's interesting about the wording in this and then also the fact that it's called uh, The Wonderful World of Dreams and stuff is that I see an emphasis everywhere where it keeps saying around the world, around the world. And I feel like it's there, like, manage expectations because we're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what was the park that was getting the Zootopia and the Arendelle? Is that Shanghai? Uh, Shanghai, yeah, is getting Zootopia. Paris is still under its expansion, while yeah. Avengers Campus still just opened. They still have more to go. Uh, you know, it, there's a lot of expansion happening throughout the other parks, but they talk about that every every time they do the expo, and then everyone loses their mind over what's going to happen with the actual parks here. And you know, we we have a lot of expectations. Like I, I feel like they have to announce. If they're not already going to announce when Tron's going to open up, it's going to be at Expo that they're going to have to announce that. But since there's a lot of people saying, like, oh, we think it's going to open sometime around October, I feel like you have to announce that before September 11th. That's got to come a little bit sooner. But uh, beyond that, you know, Epcot's still in a state of disrepair, so we need, we need the update on what's actually happening with that. And there's always going to be more surprises. Maybe a nighttime parade for Magic Kingdom finally? Probably never. But maybe. Well, that's maybe. been the rumor, though, that a nighttime parade's coming back. I've heard that <laughs> multiple sources have said that, right? Am I, or am I, was I imagining things? I don't know. Because there's also, my friend tried to tell me the other day that they like know somebody who works there. And I don't want to say their role of what they work at Disneyland. But they were like, Paint the Night apparently is set to return when Main Street Electrical Parade goes away. And I said, I doubt it. I doubt it would come back until after Christmas, if it yeah. comes back at all. Because I was like... And also the wording of Main Street Electrical Parade going away also makes it sound like that would come back again. And my guess is that would probably just come right back. But it's a it's a it's a if anything, it's a I think it's just a money saving thing where it's like there's less performers involved in Main Street Electrical Parade. There's a lot of performers. Uh, from what I understand with Paint the Night, it's that it requires extra performers because it's a very physically intense parade yeah. to put on. So there's a lot of injuries that happen. And that's why it, they go through and actually need more cast members for that parade, even though there's not, you know, necessarily a significant amount more performers. But, yeah, I mean, it's with like the Christmas parade. Once you get to that point, that runs twice a day at Disneyland. So you don't it runs day and then into the evening. So you don't need then Main Street Electrical Parade happening, too. That's too much parade for one day. So I think Main Street will go back after it's all doing done the full parade this year. Uh, the full Christmas parade? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's a caval I think it's cavalcades. Christmas fantasy parade? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't read the release uh, that came out this morning. Yeah, I'll, that that's what I was. I mean, I'll talk about it when we get to that. I don't mean to hey, well, cut you off. But, but yeah, D twenty three Expo gonna be a it's gonna be a great time. Hopefully, hopefully. Do you think any major announcements? Hmm. I think they're gonna use it in terms. Hmm. I think like 
uh, I think we're going to get some big stuff specifically related to Marvel. I know there was a lot of stuff that just came out recently at Comic-Con, but I think they've intentionally left a lot of stuff that's maybe a little bit closer to production that's going to be out, that there's going to be some big announcements in relation to that. My hope is that they're going to say they're still building the roller coaster in conjunction with it being like a big Marvel-related stuff i die i don't know that they will that's just me wishful thinking but i think there'll be a lot of that i think there'll be some minor star wars stuff and i think there'll probably be some disney disney plus i yeah. think is still going to be the big like push again yeah. this but year with, with the parks i feel like those have there's there's been years where you kind of have a general idea of what to expect you know there was a couple years in a row where uh wdw news today was basically spoiling every single announcement before it could actually be made and those years weren't as surprising but uh i i still feel like i feel like there's always going to be a couple big things like i i did not see last time around i didn't see the mary poppins thing in the united will. kingdom coming <laughs> now we probably <laughs> yeah, never will because uh, that seems completely dead and never coming back but stuff like that that's they're always going to throw out something that you know maybe some people know about the rumors with it but that like people who aren't deep into what to expect from it well won't see coming at all like i would have we knew they, they were trying to build a star wars land for years and years and years and planning it but i would have never thought as rhino and i were wrapping up a movie panel that they were gonna that bob Iger was gonna come out on the stage and be like hey we're making star wars galaxy's edge mm -hmm. and you'll yeah. hear more yeah. about it in just a little bit like that kind of came out of and he played that little field teaser. so yeah so you know i i don't i don't ever want to dig too far in i know some cool things are going to be announced that we don't expect and i like being surprised every now and then it's it, it, especially when it comes to this news like it's it's more fun if you're not just like checking off a list of yep knew knew they were gonna say that 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 yeah. that i like the curveballs oh, yeah because you get to be with everyone else in the moment like oh my gosh that's the only time i get excited how ever does, how does it go how does it go do it again he does know he does this thing where he grabs you he grabs me whenever he gets really excited. He like squeezes. Like inappropriately. Like, no, it's always my shoulder. He'll grab my shoulder and be like, <gasps> I did. <laughs> he's, he's talking specifically. I was not expecting after we saw a movie recently, they were like at the point where the movie should have played. And then the trailer for Oppenheimer came on and I got <laughs> so excited. me so hard. I was like, what? <laughs> no, you did grab me into the 2015 panel. I think when, when, um, I don't know if it was the Galaxy's Edge announcement or it was something, and you grabbed my leg really hard, and I was just like, "Ow!" <laughs> you know what? Talk to HR about it. It's not my problem. That I'm <laughs> and when the you, Rock apparently. came, out. he did get to touch the Rock though, so that was good. That Twice. was fun. Yeah. Twice. Twice up and down. Yeah. Not the Rock when he came up the aisle and then went back down the aisle. It wasn't like a top part okay. or a bottom part. <laughs> Whose Rock are we talking about? Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. When you say he grabbed your leg and got to touch the rock, the rock. The rock. Oh, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. wow, I have no idea this goes on Sorry. in my company. Do we yeah. finally get something about the Imagination Pavilion? Um, the, I, my guess is that'll be included in the Epcot thing because I think that's a big thing where they say they're they're giving. They're, I don't know if they said it or somebody just was making that up, but I thought I saw it somewhere where they did specifically say they're going to talk about Epcot oh, really? at the convention. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I think do. I read that. I hope they do something with imagination, but at this point in time, I'm expecting the world to end before that ride ever changes ever again. Because it oh, just, I thought you meant the pavilion. I I didn't. I I thought you meant that dome thing where they were building that. That's play Wonders area. of Life. Yeah, okay. that's well, the play pavilion. I don't know what I'm talking about. Imaginations <laughs> where your buddy Figment hangs out. Yeah, that I just pretend doesn't exist. It's like a little. It's like a you know brownouts in the yeah. lights during the summertime <laughs> up there. Yeah. When we're in like a Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome world. <laughs> Imagination will still be standing there untouched, and they'll be like, "That is where Figment lives. That is <laughs> that's where the we water don't flows go there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Lord. where the Kathy lives. <laughs> that is where the Kathy lives. Ruler of the lands. <laughs> that is Kathy's yeah, favorite. Yeah. As she evolves into Smeagol, <laughs> precious, Just with a little dragon <laughs> on her." <laughs> And you know who'll be there too? Kathy. <laughs> Not Kathy. Sorry. <laughs> What's her daughter's name? My God. I'm Katie. Having a Katie, yeah. I've seen her name. Through. Sorry, Katie. I know you're watching. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Told you. Lights out in the summertime. 
Anyway, I it's very it's exciting. I love D23. I honestly think it is like the thing that re-energizes like me specifically to be like, I'm so excited about all these things. This is that that look like that you're there with the other weirdos and like we're all just being weirdos together and it's just like seeing everybody get excited in different ways. And it's crazy who you meet there. Like I met a girl that time where like Craig was face down drooling all over that pool float and I couldn't sleep and <laughs> uh, the girl behind me and I started talking. She watches the show now and she like we chat. She's about to have a baby any day now and it's crazy that like here we are. Kurt, that's how I know Kurt from that. Jeremy, like all these people that we've come to be friends with Christian. Yeah. I've yeah. always looked forward to it because it was like Corey and I got to have collective breakdowns mentally, oh. emotionally, and Especially usually running a booth. Over yeah. There, a whole different, a whole oh, different yeah. experience. When we had a booth. Yeah. yeah. 2019 was a lot better without oh, yeah. a booth. That with, was an amazing with having experience. sorcerers. So we didn't have to worry about where are we going to be sitting and yeah. all of that. Did you get a sorcerer's pass this year? It's uh, the, the new it's thing. It's the hall D23 pass. So basically they cut the price down significantly from 2,500 to like 900 and you still get you know better seating premier seating right at the front don't have to wait for the big ones so yeah yeah that's that's gonna help out a lot on my mental hey, stability did you get those tickets by the way mm-hmm. okay i got scared mm-hmm. how fast did those sell out immediately fast. we were literally sitting next to each other on like five computers and we're like yeah and uh, he was the his was the only one that went through wow yeah, my friend was literally like texting me and she's like, oh no, they sold out. Those ones sold out or whatever. So it's interesting, you know. Craig's good luck when it comes to that stuff. I don't give away secrets. Craig has his secrets. I have <laughs> secrets, I don't give them away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah, I've end stopped a being, conversation. I've stopped being interested in this. <laughs> oh, me too. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, all right. What I am interested in, though, I think you're excited about this, too, is uh, they've announced when the new bakery is opening at the boardwalk. Yeah. I am, like, oddly excited about this. I I don't know why. Anytime new food, it's just exciting. What was it replacing? ESPN? So it's the boardwalk deli, which is going to be taking over the the bakery. the, The normal bakery. I'm excited because there are going to be two plant-based options, one for breakfast and one for lunch. Uh, but I just I love the boardwalk. So anytime they do something different or new at the boardwalk, I get excited because I love to just hang out at the boardwalk all the time. Maybe the staff well, will be nicer now. Maybe. Given, <laughs> given the fact that it's the boardwalk, what I'm hoping for is they go for authenticity and really create a true – Northeast Jersey, New York deli. Is there any chance I'm going to get that? Um, I think so. A lot of people are excited and hoping for that. So uh, some of the stuff they've released, like picture wise, looks really good. Um, they have the breakfast looks fun. It's going to be like everything bagel sandwiches. Um, they have a plant based ciabatta sandwich. And then for lunch, it looks like they have a grilled cheese sandwich with tomato soup is one of the things they're highlighting. Also, this roasted chicken sandwich that's going to have cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, roasted garlic, aioli. Sounds oh, fun. Hungry. And they also have a plant-based um, sandwich as well for the afternoon stuff. And they're going to have these really cute cannolis. Um, I hope they keep the little Mickey chocolate artwork that's going on the outside of the cannolis. But they're also going to have um, New Jersey crumb cake, a New York style half moon cookie, cream puffs, a lot of fun things. Can I share an unpopular opinion? Yeah. I have never liked cannolis. I don't like them either. I mean, I, I'm not. You're Italian. Oh, back. Uh, pandas back there, clutch and pearls. Uh, what is it that you don't like about them? Too sweet. I they're think too that's hard. where I want. I well. It's, I don't. I don't do know. So Wegmans, they sell a. Uh, it's a cup of cannoli chips. So the the outside, and then you dip it in the cannoli mixture. The, See, that I the like. inside, yeah. and that's incredible. But yeah, some if they sit in the freezer or refrigerator too long, they break and they shatter. Yeah. But I don't know. I like the sweetness yeah, of them. I'm not. I'm never been a fan of cannoli. Wow. Have you? You've had a good. I've had the best cannolis, and I still don't like them. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. We got to work on that. Let me change that. 
No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. One cannoli at a time. <laughs> That's your contribution for this show? Yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> hey, look, that's I'm why just you now getting up? into sweets. I, can't, I want one. <laughs> yeah, really. This yeah. Is late in life, man. You're, I know. You're, you're I'm late just gonna, to the party. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Cannolis are one of the things that I really miss being able to eat. Now that I can't eat dairy, like, I miss that. I miss cannolis. They're so good. Ugh. I don't know how you don't Go like on this them. medication amount. I can't eat anything, so it doesn't matter. What's your go-to dessert? Mine? Yeah. What's what's that other very Italian dessert, tiramisu? No, no, never been a fan of tiramisu uh, either. Um, Coffee on top always makes me cough. <laughs> it's the dust you always get in your mouth. No, I'm uh, I'm a cheesecake guy. Mm. I'm a cheesecake. Give me a good New York cheesecake. The souffle at Palo. Souffle at Palo. Well, that's a go-to dessert if I'm eating a Palo. Right. I'm talking. He's telling the warden what the last meal is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cheesecake. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, are we done talking about the deli? We can be. Okay. Because I'm hungry. <laughs> I want a sandwich. But I, I, have, I have some things still to talk about, too. Okay. I got more. It's Disneyland related, though, so everyone buckle up. Uh, Craig alerted me when I got here. I just stole your saying too by accident. I'm sorry. Um, that uh, Disneyland did just announce on the Disney Parks blog that their holiday stuff will be returning November 11th through January 8th. Um, it's very exciting. I've only been there once for the holiday season, and it was wonderful. I loved it. But uh, at California Adventure, they're going to have their big, giant, 50-foot-tall Christmas tree on Buena Vista Street. And uh, the Cars Land area is going to have that overlay that it does. And it'll, that means you're going to get uh, Luigi's Joy to the Whirl and Mater's Jingle Jamboree, as well as some nighttime stuff, which is a uh, World of Color Season of Light is going to be back. And that is going to have uh, cool. holiday music. Have you seen that one? No. I don't think I actually saw that one when I was there. Um, I think it was I was there that year when the I'll be it was out broken. There. I'll be out there at the beginning of December for our uh, ABD. Oh, then you probably all see all this stuff. Yeah, I that's hope awesome. So. Yeah, because um, so yeah, World of Color. Then they also are going to have the festival, of the holiday booths, and those were really good. I remember eating at those. Um, and um, they're going to have the concerts in the Paradise Gardens Park, which are always pretty nice as well. And then you've got Mickey's Happy Holidays. That's a procession of Disney and Pixar characters that are going to be uh, dancing and marching along to upbeat rhythms of the holiday toy drummers. Um, and then also there is what was a really cool and high energy experience. But when I looked back on my video, the floats are very scary. Is the Disney Viva Navidad Street Party that has Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, um, donning festive fiesta attire and accompanied by Mexican folklorico dancers and mariachis, Brazilian samba dancers and percussionists, and the giant Mojiganja puppets. Those are scary. Um, they're just giant. They look like people, and they just whirl past you really quick, and it's like it's the fastest I've ever seen a float move, so it was kind of intimidating. But um, Mirabelle's going to be out there meeting people as well in the uh, Paradise Gardens Park, and you can find Santa Claus creeping around the Red Wo Wood Creek Challenge Trail just trying to give kids candy canes. I don't know about the candy canes part, but I just assume. Um, and then at Disneyland Park, you've got your decor. You've got a 60-foot tall tree over there because they got to show up DCA. Sleeping Beauty's Castle is going to have all that stuff on it. The Shimmering Icicles, twinkling, light, twinkling Lights, and then uh, characters in holiday attire will meet at Town Square. And then there is a Christmas Fantasy Parade. I, I, I'm i sorry. I, I, I missed that when I was reading this originally. But um, that is a daily musical procession of floats, marching toy soldiers, dancing gingerbread cookies, and more. And then at night, there's the Believe in Holiday Magic Fireworks uh, as well as the snowfall they'll be doing and projections on Small World, which is really cool. And I love that Small World overlay that they're doing, the Small World holiday. That'll be there. Haunted Mansion holiday is going to be there. And then, of course, Downtown Disney and the hotels are going to have special stuff as I'm well. I'm excited. But, yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice. It'll be very cool. Yeah, like when I said, I believe them once. It was so. great. Um, it's all included in park admission. Oh, it's all included. Yeah, none of it's part of a party there. So, oh, cool. Um, I thought they had started doing holiday parties last year. I thought they did like five, but this didn't say anything about that, and I could be completely wrong. So, um, but yeah, so you'll be get to see all that when you go out for the ABD. So that'll be cool. I'm excited, especially because they'll give you hopefully give you good reserve seating for some of that. Sometimes, sometimes they're like, I have to be like, we got to move over here. <laughs> That's the benefit of having one of us on the on the ABDs. Is nice. Yeah, 
being a know-it-all to the yeah, poor a, people. <laughs> it's a Diz exclusive uh, ABD backstage magic. We do those a couple times a year. Craig and Rhino just did one. Uh, a few Craig weeks and Kylie. Ago. Oh, Craig and Kylie. I know. It's, it's easy to confuse Rhino as my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your wife? Yeah. <laughs> so if you didn't see, Rhino and I announced our pregnancy <laughs> on Instagram a couple weeks ago. It's a pizza. <laughs> It's a calzone. <laughs> um, so Greg and Kylie hosted one a few weeks ago. And uh, Federico Argar from C. Disney and I are hosting uh, the one in December. So I'm excited. About I bet that. that one's going to be really cool, especially well, with like I'm that holiday it. stuff. Like, so, you got to make sure you get the hookup with that candy cane. Everybody always tells me about the candy canes that people like line up to get at on the Main thing. Street. Apparently, yeah. yeah. I've never. I, oh, they're massive. Yeah, I didn't. They weren't doing them. The I think I was only there for like two days, and they weren't doing them the two <laughs> days I was there. But the one we, the ABD we did in 2015, uh, that one they gave us candy canes for because it was at Christmas. But that's not a guarantee. That was like. I think that was Dean working his his magic because Dean knows how to get stuff done since he knows everyone. But yeah, yeah. oh, what other rapid fires do we have? Uh, this one's DCL related. Mm. I'll keep it brief so this doesn't turn into a Disney Cruise Line show. But there's a new internet packages. Uh, there are new internet packages available on the Disney Fantasy. So instead of paying per data usage like you do on the classic ships, they changed it to be like the Wish, where you pay for your duration. And they also did this on the Magic. I believe the magic also has this. Oh, really? Plan. Yes. Okay. This Good. plan. Now, I will say, there is a huge difference. There is a huge difference with their premium plan, which is basically I forgot how much it was a day. It's a certain amount of money per day for the length of the cruise, and. You're not going to be doing any live streaming with it, but it was a lot more stable and a lot faster than what I'm used to. Now, I, I wish it was on the Wonder. We uh, just got off the yeah. dream. And $89 for 1,000 megabytes, that just goes so fast. I was, yeah, I was okay. really hoping it, to pay for the my duration yeah and so the duration ones you have twenty dollars per day for basic surf so 140 for the cruise if it's a seven night and for premium it is thirty dollars but let me say that that basic surf we couldn't even get email or i couldn't get email bank that, account. Yeah. It was just that might have been screen. the stay connected because stay connected is ten dollars per day and i don't know why they had to come up with goofy names for it uh, Stay Connected says post text pictures uh, on popular websites and apps like Facebook, Messenger, oh, it, Twitter, it, it, Instagram. S you don't get email until you get to basic surf. Then you can send and receive emails at the $20 I just went level. To I just went to premium yeah. and was able to do everything I needed to do. And it was nice not to have to constantly watch, like log out, log, out, right. log back in. Now, these uh, are price per device. It doesn't mean you can only use that device. It just means one person can be logged in at a time. So you can, I ha log out of the service and log back into well, your another device if you have it. And, and we used it on the Wish, and the cool part was you could kick yourself off your yeah. other devices. So, like, I would leave videos uploading in the stateroom on my computer while we weren't in there. And then as soon as I knew I needed something on my phone, I just kicked myself off the Internet from my phone and like that's that's very convenient rather than have to go all the way back to the room log out of something it's certainly an improvement over what we've had this could be a whole show a whole dc dcl yeah. show just on internet because there are so many little tips and tricks mm -hmm. that you can talk about especially if you're paying per data yeah. turn off certain things um auto updates all that stuff because i just see i saw that number just go down 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 like five yeah. minutes yeah, always does. Uh, we got an update. 49% uh, of the people who voted uh, agreed with Pete that cheesecake is a good uh, dessert, the oh, best we, of we the desserts. A, we, we did. A, we yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did. 12% uh, said cannoli. 18 said tiramisu. 20% said something else. A lot of like cookies, chocolate chip cookies Girl, in ice there. Ice cream. So ice cream. I, it was the. I gave them the right to vote. Did you just call him girl? I do. He hates it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ryan. <laughs> he does that, that all the time. He does it. We're gonna play that game. 
for the rest of this. I didn't say girl. <laughs> uh, I have a rapid fire that I can talk about. They released uh, information on the food that was going to be available during the day at Magic Kingdom for uh, the Halloween season, plus some of the uh, food at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. And there's honestly. This is a dining show. And now it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's way too much to list, but the four things I really want are all conveniently in the same picture. Is it the corn with the candy corn on it? Uh, no, 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 no. That's too weird. That's going to mess with my mind too much, <laughs> so I can't do that. Uh, at Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe, there's going to be a uh, Bayou burger that's an all beef patty, jalapeno pimento cheese, crispy andouille sausage, and garlic pickles. That's available both during the regular day and the party. Uh, the next two are only available during the Halloween party. That's a Hades hot dog, spicy beef and pork hot dog, Hades relish and pickles served with house-made violet mustard. So we, we had dog. purple ketchup before in the past. Now we have purple mustard. Very mm. exciting. Uh, un poco loco tots, chorizo sausage, green onion, Hades cheese sauce. That sounds good. And then a spellbinding fried pie from Golden Oak Outpost. Buffalo chicken, mozzarella, and blue cheese wrapped in a flaky dough topped with a candy eye and jalapeno ranch aioli. So it almost like... It oh almost kind of looks like book a little bit. Oh, that's... I thought it was a pastry. I thought it was like a dessert. It is a, a puff pastry, but, but with they meats. can be savory. Oh. Right now, I feel like we went over this with empanadas, hand pies. Those aren't desserts. They can be both desserts or savory. An empanada? Oh, I just finished my meal. I'm going to cool down with an empanada. <laughs> I did. When I was in oh, California, I got a delicious dessert empanada. So I, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Well, was it filled with sweet stuff? Yes. Yeah. That's different. I'm talking empanada with like ground beef in it. You're not Corey Martin ordering his steak for dessert at, on a cruise. Actually, I was eating dessert this cruise. <laughs> Julie was very proud. <laughs> How much escargot much, though? No. Escargot for dessert? I no. I, no? I actually what? had escargot just for an appetizer, and I I, did, I was more civilized. You're responsible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's Corey at? Yeah, really. What are we, who, who are you and what have you done with Corey? No, never ate sweets. Never ate sweets. This is a new development later in life. Well, it's a new development being alcohol-free. My body wants some sugar. Want some carbs. <laughs> yeah. I need carbs. Mm -hmm. All right, what else do we have? Anybody else have a rapid fire they need to share? I was just going to talk about the foodie guide real quick for Not So Scary. Um, if anyone is like me, none of these are plant-based or like allergy friendly. So when I do go, uh, I'll have to look for what can be either modified or what will be allergy friendly. Cause from this, I'm not seeing anything, but it all looks really good. And I wish I could eat all of it, but I cannot, but it lo all looks really good. Those churros with the M&Ms on it, those look fun, but just wanted to let you guys know. I wonder if we could reassign our tickets to go to a different night, because you will be the only one be able to go. Erica will be here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about me. Corey will be here. <laughs> well, I care about me. <laughs> I believe Kylie's taking your ticket, oh, so you're stuck. Me. That's fine. <laughs> she better be good to our pizza. <laughs> she better be good to our pizza. <laughs> it's our baby now. A little baby pepperoni. <laughs> a little baby pepperoni. <laughs> We call him Little Pepe for short. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I think this 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 has run its run its course. That's gonna do it, folks, for this week's episode of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back with you again next week with another episode of the Diz Unplugged. Have a great week, and please remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Oh. oh.